Hi everyone, Ron Kreider reporting for duty today. It is Friday. I have the numbers for you for October the 9th. My Stay Safe at Home 207 day. 207 of these broadcasts. Never dreamed I would be doing that many of them when I started. So I'm going to report the numbers for today. 25 days until Election Day. 77 days until Christmas. 83 days left in this year. And I just finished my 10th... uh, Radiation treatment, so far so good. I'm not doing too badly. A couple of little side effects, but I think I'm going to pull through it. So that means there's 20 more to go, so I'm going to hang in there and get these things done. Alrighty, folks, I have to let you know every day I don't put any commercials in here. If you see the commercials, go ahead, reach up there and push the skip button and get out of it. I, I don't make any money off of anything I'm doing here. I'm not doing this as some form of get-rich-quick scheme because it certainly is not. I'm not a Rebecca Jones. Rebecca Jones has done a marvelous job. She raised $300,000 to put her little website together to do something that the state is already doing, albeit she's done it somewhat better. Before Uh, we get into the news, let me give you the numbers because the numbers today are really good. So let's start off with these. 115 new deaths. Now, there's nothing great about 115 new deaths other than the fact it's not 158, which it was yesterday. So that's an improvement of 43. So green on the screen for the number of deaths, 115 for the past 24 hours. And now taking a look at the positives, 2,908. Yesterday it was 3,306. That's an, that's an improvement of 398. Any improvement is a good thing. Now, I have to say this one more time succinctly. It's very important that I, I was somewhat leading people astray, and I was called out on it, and they were absolutely right, that I used to say, look, don't worry, deaths are final. We, we can't do anything about that because nobody's coming back. But these positives, that's a different story. With the positives, you know, you can get, everybody's going to get better. That's not true. Here is the big dilemma with COVID-19. This guy lurks around. You never know when he's going to strike, and when he does, bang, you got it. And then when you get better, you're not really sure you're better. Why is that? Because there, I'm not a doctor, so I'm not going to get into all this stuff. All I'm tell you is there are lots of lingering side effects to this COVID-19. Now, some people survive it very nicely, have no side effects whatsoever. Other people end up with all sorts of respiratory pro- respiratory problems and uh, heart problems and y- you name it. But it, it can be a really big problem. So please don't mistake my suggesting that these these uh, positives don't really mean anything. They're very important. You don't want to become a positive. Being a positive is a very bad thing because you have a 1 in 10 chance of you're going to survive, okay? But you have a 1 in chance uh, 10 chance of having issues with this for the rest of your life. Now, you know these kids that went out there and had those parties Give me a break. They had parties to see who could get it first. Oh, this is going to be cool. Who can get it first? Because it's going going to be over. We're going to be done with it. Forget about it. Not so. Absolutely not so. Because maybe one in ten of those people are going to have problems for the rest of their lives. This is no joking matter. No, no, not so. No party matter. No, no way except for the party we're going to have when it's all over and we can have our celebration party. All right, so those are the numbers there. Let me tell you about the other number. Uh, Seven-day moving average, 90. Green on the screen for that. It was 92 yesterday, and on Wednesday it was 94. We're going in the right direction with the seven-day moving average. I'll tell you about the check mark and all that in a little bit. Then in addition to the positivity rate, this is a very important number as well, 4.12. This is the testings versus tests, the positivity rate of the testings uh, that were done versus the number of tests for a particular day. And today our number was 4.12. Now, the testing since we started was 13.19. That's out of control. But this 4.12 is good because it needs to be under 5. If it's under 5, the state seems to think it's okay to be working on this reopening and getting things going again. Uh, We did have a number over 5. I believe it was back on Tuesday. But ever since then, we've been in the 4s, and this is 4.12. So that's a very important number. When you look at my chart, you'll see it on the right-hand side. So there you go. Those are the numbers for today. You'll see them right up here on the screen. And I already gave you the numbers about how many days are left in the year and all that sort of thing. So now let's go back to where we started here. 
Florida reported 3,306 new COVID-19 cases, the highest daily total in nearly three weeks uh, a couple of days ago. That was not a good thing. Cases are increasing almost two weeks after the state uh, published, uh, after the state pushed its COVID reopening to phase three, allowing for uh, up to full capacity in restaurants and bars. Some medical experts have said the rise of this infection is not a surprise. So what they're saying is we're going to see a lot more of these infections. Well, I suspect we will. It is not, I can't imagine why we would not see it. Uh, yes, we have to get back to work and people, but there's a lot of things we don't have to do. You know, there, there's plenty of things that we can do. I mean, I'm not suggesting you need to be a hermit. I'm not a hermit. I'm going out. I'm going over to the hospital every day. and You know, I, I get out. But uh, uh, the more socializing you do, the closer you get to people, the better chance you have of picking up COVID-19. Look at what's going on at the White House. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. What a what a debacle that whole thing is. And everybody, the Democrats are using that as a, oh, look, look how stupid the president is. What an idiot he is. You know, they're pretty careful up there, but they still got it. A lot of the people at the White House got it. So Florida reported 1,415 new cases on Monday, 2,251 cases on Tuesday, 2,582 cases on Wednesday. Some of the increases are due to more test results Re, uh, reported by the state recently. So, yes, there are more test results. They're going to have more cases. No question about that. The daily statewide testing positivity rate for new infections was at 4.57. Ours was a little better today, according to the state. Uh, and they say, remember, uh, reopening needs to be under 5%. So I already told you that. Sorry about that. The state on Thursday also reported the deaths of another 170 people due to COVID-19 illness. That was the highest total on any one day so far in October. Most of the deaths listed on the state's daily statistical tallies did not happen in the last 24 hours, but were just confirmed by authorities. So I tell you this all the time. When, when I give you these numbers, and I say in the past 24 hours, past 48 hours, that's when they were reported, but it does not necessarily mean they happened at that particular time. And I already gave you the story about these uh, positives, so I'm not going to tell you anything more about that. Uh, we just don't want people to have a false sense of uh, probable uh, complete recovery because that's just not the case. There's, you don't, don't get the idea that you're going to recover, everything's going to be fine. And I was one of the people who was telling you that, so for, for which I apologize profusely. All right, let me uh, jump into the weather report once I find the weather report. Oh, by the way, don't forget to push the like button. <laughs> that would be good. That would be excellent. I have a lot of new friends, by the way, over at the hospital. All these people show up every morning at 8.30 to get their uh, test result, to get their uh, radiation. And we're all kind of there together. We have this little radiation club. <laughs> it's very cool. And I met a lot of nice people over there, very nice people. We're very, very blessed to have uh, uh, the Cleveland Clinic here in Vero Beach. Boy, what is, I mean, if it wasn't here, where, where, what, what would I do? I mean, where would I go? So we're very fortunate to have that. All righty, let's take a look at the weather forecast for the Treasure Coast today. Looks like we're going to have about 20% chance of rain. A mix of clouds and sunshine, stray showers or thunderstorms is possible. High 86 degrees, the winds east-southeast 10 to 15 miles per hour. This is the weather report for the Treasure Coast for Friday. And then for Friday night, 20% chance of rain. Some clouds, a stray shower or thunderstorm is possible. Low 78, winds east-southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then tomorrow, south. Saturday. Here we go into the weekend. Oh, boy. We're, we're getting to the weekend, finally. The weekend, we're going to see 80%, oh, no, 60% chance of rain. Uh, variable clouds and scattered thunderstorms, high 87 degrees, and the winds will be southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. As I said before, chance of rain is going to be about 60%. So, um, looks like we're going to move into kind of a nice weekend. A 20% chance of rain may, that's for the whole Treasure Coast, and Probably won't come to Vero Beach, right? It'll probably hang out down in Fort Pierce or Stewart. Who knows? All right. Shout-outs today. Let's not forget the shout-outs. Uh, Ann, Halley, Dan Shaw, and George, thank you folks for watching so much. And uh, they were distant spacing up at Disney World, but they're home now. Now, that's good. They're back. And, and, and they apparently are not sick, and they did a good job up there. Um, I still have this note in here from Heather Mason Wood that said that I might be feeling a little tired after my radiation shots and 
Uh, Heather, you are absolutely right. Yeah, yeah, I do feel a little tired every once in a while. Yeah, yeah, there's some side effects to this thing. Nothing serious that you can't deal with. Hey, anything's better than not getting rid of it, and that's the whole plan here. Marie Arnold, thank you for watching. Diana Stark, uh, Iowa Lizzie, we're now calling her Flyover Lizzie. Uh, Joan, Ellen, Elizabeth Hutchison, George and Vanessa down in Miami, Tony and Kevin, and uh, Wayne and Dorothy, my mini Tonka friends whom I have not met yet. The Kennedys whom I have not met yet, and uh, they're up there on Long Island. Raymond Carey's getting short here. He may be leaving here at the end of November. Sorry to see him go because he has this fabulous little dog, Katie, which I already showed you. Captain Marsh is not here today. She's only here Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and Thursday. And then we have Mike here today. So, hey, Captain Marsh, she'll be watching at home, maybe. Danny up in New Jersey. Thanks, Danny, for all the recent information you gave me. I appreciate it so much. Ron and Barb Dumoulin, Jim Peabody, Britt, Betsy, Sherry Hale, Jay, Timothy, John Marks, and Kelly over at the Polo Deli. Polo Deli is a fabulous place to go. If you're not familiar with it, it's on Cardinal. And, uh, you know, now we have another deli on uh, Cardinal. We have, it's called the Gourmet Deli, Writer's Gourmet Deli. And they're two totally different places. Now, John Marks at the Polo Deli, John and uh, Kelly, he has a tremendous selection of wines at very good prices, the best prices in town on wines that you know something about. Like you see wines there and you'll say, oh yeah, that's the kind of wine I drink. Look at the look at the price on that wine. I remember going to a place here on the beach looking for a bottle of wine. I found the bottle of wine, it was $29. I went to his place and it was 19. I mean, same bottle of wine. That's pretty amazing. It's a big savings. If you like to drink wine, we like wine, I like wine, uh, go see uh, John and Kelly because they have the greatest wine prices at the Polo Deli down there on Cardinal Drive. And then we have Riders. Riders has a nice wine selection of wines I'm not familiar with. I have bought some of their wines and they were excellent. I didn't know what they were when I bought them, I, but I tasted them and they were quite good. And they're, they don't have any wines over, I think, 25 or $26. Plus, they have a really fine deli as well. So we're lucky. We have two places to go now over here. Pretty soon the beach market will be reopening in November. I'll get you a little video next week on that. A couple of more shout outs to people like Heather Mason. Wood. Hey, Heather, you know, thank you, thank you, thank you for all the things you, all the nice things you say to me. Gail, Gail Beeson, Carol, the K-A-R-O-L, Carol, the C-A-R-O, Carol, uh, Barb, J, Megan Davis, Joyce, Diane, Rosemary Biddle, Edith Stokes, and then, of course, my Facebook friends are people like uh, Bruce and Jay Parm, and I, oh, man, he's a terrific guy, uh, Jean and Nancy Bicknell, Nancy Strazula, Susan Taylor, uh, Barb Chandler, and Lisa Brown Kreider, my daughter. Alrighty, folks, let's jump right into the uh, numbers here. But may I say one more thing? Please, please, please. Social distance. It's easier to wear a mask than it is a ventilator. And here come the numbers. Alrighty, folks, here we are. It's Friday, October the 9th. It's about 12.15 in the afternoon when these numbers came in. A little bit late today, but not too late. And good news today, green on the screen all the way around. I don't know that there's going to be any red any place because we take a look at the deaths. Yesterday, we had 158 deaths in the past 24 hours for the entire state of Florida. Today, we have 115. That's an improvement of 43 over yesterday. And with the positives. Yesterday we had 3,306. Today we have 2,908. That's an improvement of 398. Good job. Okay, now we're off and running and hopefully in the right direction. Let's take a look at Miami-Dade. 22 new deaths to report in the past 24 hours, 391 new positives. Broward County, Fort Lauderdale, 12 new deaths, 181 new positives. In Palm Beach County, 9 new deaths and 123 new positives. Alrighty, then here in Orange County, that's Orlando, seven new deaths to report in the past 24 hours, 251 new positives. Brevard County, that's Melbourne, two new deaths to report, 120 new positives. Martin County, that's Stewart, one new death to report, 20 new positives. St. Lucie County, one new death to report, 
27 new positives. And here in Indian River County, where I am, fortunately, we have no new deaths to report today. 24 new positives, five of which were in zip code 32960, and two of them are in zip code 32963. Okay, that takes care of that. Now let's take a look at these moving averages over here. Here we go with the seven-day moving averages for today. 90, that means that 90 people, an average of 90 persons per day, have passed away in the past seven days. It was 92 on Thursday, 94 on Wednesday. It was uh, actually in the 80s last week. Now, that's a that's a very important number because we want to keep that down. Now, let's take let me show you one other number here before I finish here. Uh, our, our positivity rate, testings versus uh, positives, what was 4.12. This is very important. This number has to stay under 5. And as I recall, back on Tuesday, we were above 5. This number has to be under 2. Otherwise, we're in not safe territory and we're increasing instead of de decreasing. So that's a good barometer to let us know where we are. This number is a good barometer. This 90 seven-day moving average number is good. This 115 I don't like it because it's a triple-digit number, and this 158 was horrible. But fortunately, we have some lower ones over here, like the 38s and the 44s. We'll just have to see what this weekend brings us. All right, now let's go up here and take a look at the moving averages on my chart. Here you go with my chart. Well, unfortunately, as you know, we had to climb back up there, which we did yesterday. Now we're beginning to climb back down again. So graphically, you can see that... If you draw a line from the top down, we are gradually coming down. But we're coming down like a check mark. We come down and we go up and we come down and we go up. And we don't like that. These are little check marks in here and we don't care for them. But we, what we do like is we had the check mark here, which took us back up to the top here at 915. Then we had the check mark down here, which took us back. We, we were down here on uh, 922. And on 928, it took us back to a peak again. Now we have a new check mark that went down all the way down to uh, 77.71. And we went back up to 94. And now we're on our way down. So we're having these gradual check marks coming down. And that's a very important thing with respect to our deaths. All right, folks, we're going to take a look at the states now, the United States with the deaths yes, uh, past 48 hours, not 24, but the past 48 hours. So Florida, once again, unfortunately, led the pack with 158. And it's always Texas with 103 and California with 89. These are the three most populous states. Then uh, in number fourth place was Tennessee with 63. Alabama, Georgia was in sixth place. Illinois had 32 in seventh place. North Carolina, 29 in eighth place. Missouri, number nine in they had 29, and Kansas had 26, and they were in 10th place. Let me scroll down a little bit further here. Let's get us to New York. We have a lot of friends up in New York that are interested in this. Uh, they were in 23rd place with 10, still in double-digit numbers. Arizona had 10 in double-digit numbers. Colorado, look at that, 10 in double-digit numbers. And Colorado has always been in the single-digit numbers. No, always, but most frequently. Wisconsin, they're in single digit numbers as 9 and 27. Massachusetts, 8. They were 28. Jersey, okay, you're in single digit numbers there. You got a high single digit number there, Danny, but you're at 7 uh, in 29 with 7 deaths in the past 48 hours. And Maryland for our friend up there, uh, uh, Julie, uh, eight single-digit numbers. That's okay. We Any number is not okay, but uh, single-digit numbers are better than triple and double-digit numbers. Our Minnetonka friends in 32nd place with single-digit number of plus six. Uh, Iowa for flyover Lizzie, plus six for Iowa. They're in 33rd place. We'll scroll down here a little bit more to Utah in 36th place with five. Connecticut in 37th place with five. And then uh, let's go a little bit further down here and see if there's anything else. Rhode Island for Jay Grutman, 1 in 43rd place. And that looks like it's going to do it. Of course, Wyoming had one, but Wyoming has half only a little more than half a million people living there. And uh, Maine had nothing to report. Nebraska had nothing to report and so forth. So there you go. That's a look at the United States in the past 48 hours. 
And this is what we call the global view. So here you go with the global view. And I'll give you the time for the global view. It's at 1243 today. That's accurate to nine minutes ago, 1243. So it would be, here you go. 7,611,772 for the USA cases. Huge number. USA deaths, 212,840. Global cases, 36,625,231. And global deaths, 1,063,532. Alrighty, folks, those are the numbers for Friday, and this is October the 9th. Alrighty, folks, just a few things to drop in here at the very end of this uh, video for today. Uh, one thing to let you know is the VNA is offering public flu shot clinics at their uh, VNA office parking lot, 1110 35th Lane, on Wednesday from 3 to 5 p.m., Saturday 10 p.m. to noon. Shots are also being offered at a second location, the VNA Hidden Treasures uh, Vero Beach Thrift Store, 65621st Street. Uh, that's on Monday from 9.30 to 11.30. Uh, this is a service to the community. It's a business guy by the name of Wayne Gould who wants to create an auto museum uh, in the former newspaper building on Route 1 here in uh, Bureau Beach. And he has a whole bunch of vintage cars that he would like to put on display and get these things going. It's a museum on wheels, so to speak. And he has one of those in Tucson, which is currently closed down. And he apparently brought this up before the Planning and Zoning Commission to get approval to do that sort of thing. So that would be a kind of another attraction coming to Vero Beach. And by the way, you like Pompano and you like to fish? Well, this is the time to do it. Pompano have been moving down the beaches. Although many are shorter than 11 inches, minimum fork length for harvest. So be ready to pick through a few of the catches before finding some to take home. Bass fishing has been excellent and should get better as the next new moon approaches. And uh, snapper fishing has been quite good as well. So I just thought I would throw those little things out, something positive to put in here at the end of this video. Uh, don't forget Coffee House 1420. Go over there tomorrow. They're not open on Sunday, so go on over there on Saturday. Uh, and I don't know when they're open now. They're, they started opening originally from 7 a.m. to, and it was 8 to 2. I think maybe this week they're open from 7 to 5, but better check them out on Facebook, Coffee House 1420. I'll put something up here on that. Don't forget to get your flu shot. Don't forget to take a look at ClassicAmerica.net, mostly Sinatra.com. Those are my music channels. They're really good. I like them a lot. Doesn't cost anything. It's free music and virtually no commercials. When I say virtually no commercials, probably isn't more than two minutes of commercials in the whole hour. And then there's Vero Beach Five Star with some of the, many of the restaurants that I have been to, but I'm still working on that one. And now I'm going to say, don't forget to push the like button if you haven't done so already. Never be a part of the problem and always be a part of the solution. And have a very, very blessed Friday. It's the end of the week. We're into the weekend. Have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you back here on Saturday. Have a great day. Ron Kreider, signing off.